go home. Why not? It doesn't matter now. I told you before how Al Eamon raised me, right? That my mother was a serving girl at the castle and he took me in? Eamon is gravely ill. So these are our visitors? The ones you told me about, Mother? Y yes, Connor. The demon in Connor needs to be destroyed. But killing the demon would mean killing the... Unless you intend to enter the Fade. Where is Al Eamon? Upstairs in his room. I think the demon has been keeping him alive. Who will go into the Fade? Morrigan is going. One soul I already possess. I do not need another. I wish only to talk. Do you take me for a fool? I know better than to bargain with your kind. If you wish a battle, you will have it. So it is over. Connor is his old self. He does not seem to remember anything, which is a blessing. I suppose we will need to send him to the Circle of Magi's Tower for... training, once the war is over. It's so odd to think of the boy as a mage, of all things. Eamon has much to mourn and rebuild, should he recover. But at least he could be thankful that both his son and wife are safe. I owe you my deepest thanks. I had nearly... I can scarcely believe Connor is the boy he once was. There is still the matter of Jowan. His poisoning Eamon began this whole mess, yet he lives. I must decide what becomes of him. We will hold him for Eamon to decide his fate. If he doesn't recover, Jowan's fate is sealed. What do you think? Why do you want my opinion? You spoke with him, have you not? You know what he has done better than I do, even. Would you find him useful? I would not trust him, but I would not presume to tell my brother what to do. Do whatever you want with him. Very well. I shall have the mage imprisoned again, for now. But our task is not done yet. Whatever the demon did to my brother, it seems to have spared his life, but he remains comatose. We cannot wake him. The urn. The urn of sacred ashes will save Eamon. Isn't there some other way to heal him? What about magic? It has been tried, and we will continue trying. Perhaps the demon's absence will make a difference. However, the relic is another option. My husband funded the research of a scholar in Deneran, a brother Genetivi. He has been studying the inscriptions on Andraste's birth rock. When Eamon fell ill, I sent the knights to speak to Genetivi. I hoped that he had finally discovered the location of the urn of sacred ashes itself. They were unable to locate Genetivi. In desperation, I sent more knights in search of the brother, or some clue of the urn's location. I will see if I can find this relic. No one else can. Even if I wish to do it myself, I cannot abandon Redcliffe to its own devices. Perhaps you could seek out the brother's home in Denerim and see if any clues remain on his whereabouts. It is the only place to begin the search, I think. I must go to the hall and begin rebuilding. I wish you luck, and may the Maker go with you. You. You're the one who saved me. Actually, it was Morrigan. Then, I guess I owe her thanks. Father always said to remember to thank people who do nice things for you. I hope Father gets better soon. He will, won't he? My Valena returned. She told me of your daring rescue. I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am. Take this, a reward for your deed. It's dwarven made and should serve you well. I don't need a reward, keep it. That's even kinder of you. Thank you again. I'm forever in your debt. Thank you, my lady. I'd never have been able to return to my father if it wasn't for you. Now that we're back at the camp, I want to talk about what happened at Redcliffe. I think it turned out quite well, don't you? I just wanted to thank you. You went out of your way to save the Isle's family, and you did it. Even though it would have been easier not to. There's been so much death and destruction. It... Well, it, it makes me feel good that at least we were able to save something. No matter how small. I owed the Isle that much. You're welcome. This... 
This is my mother's amulet. It has to be. But why isn't it broken? Where did you find it? I found it in Redcliffe Castle, in the study. Oh, the Arl study? Then he must have found the amulet after I threw it at the wall. And he repaired it and kept it. I don't understand. Why would he do that? Perhaps you mean more to him than you think. I guess you could be right. We never really talked that much. And then the way I left. Thank you. I mean it. I thought I'd lost this to my own stupidity. I'll need to talk to him about this if he recovers from his... When he recovers, that is. I wish I'd had this a long time ago. Did you remember me mentioning it? Wow. I'm more used to people not really listening when I go on about things. Of course I remembered. You're special to me. Is this the part when the music starts and we begin dancing because I'm game? <laughs> Where's the minstrels? You called. Do you find Ferelden very strange? To put it lightly, no one has a place here. Your farmers wish to be merchants. The merchants dream of being nobles, and the nobles become warriors. No one is content to be who they are. Don't the Canari ever want to change their lot in life? What does that accomplish? The farmer who buys a shop is never a merchant. He is always a farmer turned merchant. He carries his old life with him as a turtle carries its shell. He might be happier. Happiness is fragile. Nothing can be built upon it that will last. Only duty endures. You don't think happiness is important? You can learn to find it in doing your duty, in serving your people. There is no need to search for it. Shall we move on? Is there anything you like about Ferelden? There is... interesting food here. You have a thing. It doesn't have a word in the Kunari tongue. Little baked things, like bread, but sweet and crumbly. The only thing you like about Ferelden is sweets. It is a human land like any other. Not as hostile as some, perhaps. Those little baked things, however. We have none of those in my homeland. This should be remedied. You sound a bit homesick. Perhaps. It's strange to be in a crowd and hear a language that is not your own. To see faces that are and aren't like yours. I miss the smells of Saharon. Tea and incense and the sea. Ferelden smells of wet dogs. But dogs don't smell that bad. Skunks don't mind the smell of other skunks either. 
What you need? Are you sure you're fine with what happened with Bronca? Oh, sure. I'm fine with it. I mean, she was a real firebrand between the sheets, but a bit soft in the skull, you know what I mean? Explains why she left, anyway. Well, I imagine she wasn't that crazy when she left. Oh, you don't know her. She was cracked like a glass floor. Before, she was a paragon, I mean. After that, she really fell apart. I mean, she leaves me and flits about with that water-tart hespit. What she got that I don't? Just the thought of the two of them together, kissing and licking and... intertwined on the floor of the deep roads. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just gonna go back to the tent for a moment. Uh, excuse me. Something I can help with? I heard that, in Orlay, minstrels are often spies. Where did you hear this? I read it in a history book. And did you not think that this could be historical fact and no longer true? <laughs> not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers. But some of them are... are what we call bards. I thought minstrels were bards. Many use the two words, minstrel and bard, interchangeably. But to do so in Orlais would cause misunderstanding. Bards are minstrels and more. Spies, as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. Patron? What sort of patron? Nobles, mostly. In Orlais, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence and the favor of the empress. But they could not do this openly because it is impolite. And in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. You seem to know quite a bit about these bards. <laughs> and I should, shouldn't I, after having spent most of my adult life as one. You've guessed as much, I'm sure. But does it really matter what I was? What's past is past. But why were you living as a cloistered sister in rural Ferelden? I... found myself in Ferelden, and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry. And when the storm passed, I just... did not want to leave. I like to see the Maker brought me here. I'm wondering something. I'd like to know your thoughts about some of our traveling companions. Do you mind if I ask? Go ahead, I don't mind. How about Ogren? You must have an opinion on the smell, at the very least. He is a bit much, isn't he? Well, let's just say that I'm not so surprised he's not married any longer. How he lifts his sword is a bit of a mystery. Though I suppose the point is that he does lift it. And so long as we can point him in the right direction, he charges too. He has gusto, I'll give him that. Zevran, the elf. You can't trust him, can you? Do you believe his so-called vow? Maybe. We'll see. That's a lot to put on a maybe, isn't it? He's an assassin. The crows aren't known for giving up. Maybe he's just biding his time. If he tries anything, then he'll die. Well, at least you're considering the possibility. He just seems shifty to me. What about Sten? The way he looks at me with those eyes. Creepy. And he's so quiet for someone so big. I agree. The Canari are unsettling. Yet he doesn't seem quite so bad as the Chantry tells us. According to them, his philosophy is vile and evil. Yet he seems so reasonable. And yet, he killed all those people. He doesn't even deny it. Doesn't that bother you? He seems to regret what he did. I'm not so sure that his regret means the same as it would for us. The Kunari sense of honor is... It's a bit hard to grasp. For me, anyway. What about Liliana? Is she crazy? Or do you really believe in her vision? I believe that she believes in her vision. That's one way to put it. I don't know what to make of her. If you look at her when she doesn't see you, she just looks so... so sad. I almost feel guilty taking her away from her life. It was her choice. 
Yes, I know. Still, I feel badly for her. Morrigan, do you trust her? Think about it. Maybe Flemeth sent her with us for some other reason than she said. You really don't like each other, do you? Well, aside from the fact that she's a complete and utter bitch, no, I don't like her at all. Why, do you? I like her just fine. Great. I am thrilled beyond words. No, really. Enough. I think my curiosity is sated. Let's get back to it, shall we? Have you heard much about the Grey Wardens of old? Only what I've heard in the old tales. It was said that watching the Wardens ride in on their white griffins was enough to rouse a weary heart and put the dance back in the step of an old man. The Grey Wardens were powerful, feared and respected, but they also inspired the common people. I remember a tale that was told to me many years ago. The Blight had ravaged the land for months, and the armies of the Great Kings had amassed for one last stand. As the sun burst through the clouds that boiled and churned in the dark sky above, it illuminated a vast, seething horde of darkspawn, with the archdemon at its head. And it was then, when courage seemed to fail, and all lost to death and despair, that the Grey Wardens came. They arrived with the beating of wings like mighty war drums and stood before the armies of men. And what happened then? The Grey Wardens, grim and fearless, marched forth, ever between the men and the encroaching darkspawn. They formed a shield of their own bodies and held that line until the Archdemon was dead and the last darkspawn lay trampled in the dirt. And then demanding neither reward nor recognition for their sacrifice. The Grey Wardens departed. When the clouds finally rolled back and the sun shone full upon the blighted ground, the Great Kings knew that they had lost no men and none of their blood had been spilled. Nonsense. Both sides always take losses. This is a tale about no battle the Grey Wardens have fought and yet about them all. They have always defended us from the Darkspawn, taking losses so we do not have to. People may have forgotten over the centuries, but nothing has changed. This knowledge has been blessing and burden to Grey Warden's past, and now it shall be your blessing and your burden. You are not quite as callow as I thought. That is unexpected. What is that supposed to mean? Callow? It is a word in your tongue. It means without feathers, as a new-hatched bird. I know what the word means. Then why ask? I meant, why did you think I was callow? You probably give most people that impression. You'll get over it, eventually. So will you tell me now why you were caged? I caged myself. A weak mind is a deadly foe, as you are no doubt aware. Are you saying you put yourself in that cage? I know that my failures were my own. I told you before that I was sent here. I was not sent alone. I came to your lands with seven of the Beresad, my brothers, to seek answers about the Blight. We made our way across the Ferelden countryside without incident, seeing nothing of the threat we were sent to observe. Until the night we camped by Lake Callanhad. They came from everywhere. The earth beneath our feet, the air above us. Our own shadows harbored the darkspawn. I saw the last of the creatures cut down, too late. I fell. That sounds like what happened to me at Ostagar. I heard the stories of Ostagar. Your kith stood their ground when others fled. No one can do more than that. I don't know how long I lay on the battlefield among the dead, nor do I know how the farmers found me. I only know that when I woke I was no longer among my brothers, and my sword was gone from my hand. What did you do? I searched for it, and when that failed I asked my rescuers what had become of it. Did the farmers know where it was? They said they found me with nothing. Did you believe them? I did. I knew they didn't have the blade. They had no reason to lie to me. I panicked. Unthinking, I struck them down. You panicked over a lost blade? That sword was made for my hand alone. I have carried it from the day I was set into the Beresad. I was to die wielding it for my people. Even if I could cross Ferelden and Tevinter, unarmed and alone, to bring my report to the Arashok, I would be slain on sight by the Antarm. 
They would know me as Solas, a deserter. No soldier would cast aside his blade while he drew breath. How can your people possibly think that way? We know who we are, and what we are meant to be. So that's it? You aren't going to do anything about it? What would you have me do? It could be anywhere by now. Where did you fight the Darkspawn? Near Lake Callanhad. Don't worry. We'll find it. Perhaps those words are empty, but thank you all the same. There you are. Wanted to talk to you. What about? You and I, we've... You know how sometimes you spend time with people and things. Hmm. Yeah, take your time. I was thinking, uh, I do know some people out here on the surface. A person, actually. A girl I knew in Orzammar, before I left, obviously. Who is she? Her name's Felsi. She and I were uh, friends after Bronca left for the Deep Roads. I'm sure she's forgiven me by now. Thought maybe I'd track her down, see how she's been living. Hmm, what do you mean, you were friends? Oh, we coiled the old rope, if you know what I mean. Oiled the mine shaft. <laughs> Rubbed the foreman's elbow. <laughs> You're just making those up, aren't you? Should I show you? <laughs> All right, don't kill me. Anyway, she left for the surface a year back, and I haven't seen her since. Why did she leave? What? Why are you asking me? I didn't do anything. Last I heard, she was gonna live with her mother on the surface, near some lake. <sighs> Clean Bad Lake, was it? Yeah, I saw it, I don't remember. Clean Bad? You mean Lake Callanhad? We can go there. No, no, I think it was Clean Bad. I remember because I thought, yeah, that's right, dirty good, clean bad. <laughs> <laughs> But thanks for offering to take us there. You're a good friend, Warden. Back off! I was here first! You haven't seen a sword lying around here, have you? Why, you looking to buy one? No, but my very large, angry friend here is. Oh, is he? Uh, well... That's, uh, see, I'd like to sell you one, but I don't, uh, have any myself. I got part of a glove the wolves didn't chew too badly, though. I think it was a glove, anyway. I know, don't say it, I got cheated. I knew the guy who was here before me, he sold me this spot. Said he'd found giants and all kind of crazy valuables. He didn't mention that he'd taken everything but the bones and the dirt already. His name's Ferrin. Squirrely little bastard, if you ask me. Which he didn't, but I said it anyway. He sold you this spot? Does he own this land? No, no, that's some freeholder or other. He just sold me the looting rights. I'm not building a house here or nothing. He was going to Orzammar, he said. I imagine he's gotten there by now. If you find him, tell him I sent you. It'll scare the piss out of him. Ah. There she is. I'm gonna go talk to her. Look, you gotta back me up here. Got it? Of course. <laughs> Thanks, Warden. Uh, maybe I should go talk to her first. Find out how much she misses old Ogren or who I have to kill, and then I'll go sweep her off her feet. That's me, <laughs> Mr. Charm. What can I get for you? And don't say mead. We ran out of that a week ago. And don't say rum, either. Ran out the day before yesterday. And don't say brandy. When did you run out of brandy? Oh, we haven't yet. It's just terrible. We got it from a shady Orlesian trader, and I think it might really be turpentine. Felsi! I need tables clean, girl! I've got a customer! Your name's Felsi? Aye. Who wants to know? You don't happen to know a fellow named Ogren, do you? Ugh, did you have to bring his name up? I just ate. Hmm, what happened between you two? What happened? Is that a serious question? Have you met Ogren? He got drunk. Drunker than usual, even. Took off his pants and challenged a roast nug to a wrestling match at my father's funeral. He lost, by the way. The roast got him in an arm lock. He sat there crying for half an hour before someone pulled it off him. 
How did he lose to a piece of meat? It was a sudden good roast. Elsie, what in Andraste's name are you doing? The tables, girl! All right! I've got to get back to work. Well, what does she say? She hasn't exactly forgiven you for the... Nug incident. Ah, that fight was rigged. Anyway, the guard said it wasn't worth pressing charges. So she's no call to hold a grudge. Did she say anything else? Go get her. Just be ready to pry her off when she throws herself at me. We don't want to make a scene here. Well, don't pry her off me too soon. I mean, a little scene's all right. Are you sure you're not a baker? Because you got a sodding nice set of buns. Well, look what the nug dragged in. I should have known you were in the neighborhood, by the stench. What are you doing here? Uh, just trying to kick back with a pint. Fighting Darkspawn's a lot of sodding work, you know? You're fighting Darkspawn? Well, someone's got to do it, you know? <laughs> Can't leave a blight to the humans. They'll just muck it all up. The whole surface to choose from, and you just happen to come to my tavern? Eh, uh, well... Uh... Tell her it's fate. What? Oh, right. It's fate, Felsi. What can I say? Fate? The ancestors must have a sense of humor, then. Sure they do. <laughs> You've had a good look at Lady Helmy, haven't you? If her face isn't a joke the ancestors are playing, I'm a Brontos behind. So, Lady Helmy must be a paragon of beauty, then. Tell her you've been thinking of her. I've been thinking about you, Felsi. What do you want, Ogryn? Nothing. Just thought I'd see how you were doing, is all. Well, maybe that and grease up the Bronto, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, you've seen me. You'll have to go back to Orzammar for the Bronto. Admit it. Ogryn is much more fun than the men around here. If by fun, you mean more likely to light farts on fire? Yes. Oh, well, it's been fun, Felsi. But I better go. Wait, you're leaving. You just got here. I haven't called you a shaft rat yet. Well, you can't keep the archdemon waiting. You hurt its feelings and might just turn the whole blight around and go home. Nobody wants that. Well, you don't need to fight it right now, do you? I mean, you could have a pint first. You could call me a surly Bronto. <laughs> I could tell you that you smell like nug droppings. I'll tell you what, I got some things I gotta do, but I'll come back for that pint when things are settled, you frigid deep stalker. Fine, but you better not keep me waiting, you worthless copper-plated sword cast. Wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> I still got it. Wait, that was a success. Are you sure? Weren't you watching? She could barely restrain herself. Might as well rest up while I can. You ready to go? Let's go. Welcome back, friend. You'll be glad to learn that the Circle is well on its way to recovery. Dagna of Orzammar wishes to study magic. Orzammar? Indeed. <laughs> you have piqued my curiosity. It is common knowledge that dwarves lack the aptitude for spellcraft. She will never be able to weave the simplest magic, no matter how hard she tries. All she wants is to study the theory of magic. Fascinating. <laughs> I suppose the circle should be flattered. She is willing to give up caste and clan for this. I see. If she is willing to sacrifice so much for this, then we should feel honored. Tell Dagna of Orzimar that this path will not be easy. But if she chooses it, then she is welcome here at the Circle. She will live and study with the Tranquil, and perhaps the apprentices, when it is appropriate. Thank you, First Enchanter. Ah. <sighs> If only the circle was in better shape. I fear she may be disappointed when she arrives. I think she'll be very interested in what happened. This will be interesting. <laughs> she could tell us much about our dwarven neighbors. Yes, the more I think about it, the more I like the idea. I shall take this as an indication that perhaps things are starting to look up for the circle. 
Thank you. Forgive me, but I must take my leave. I wish you well. No, you will always be welcome here. Step right, make us breath. Oh, beg your pardon, friend. You, uh, startled me a bit. We'd like to have a word with you. A, uh, a uh, word? With me? Where is my sword? I, uh, I don't know what you mean, sir. I'd give it to him if I were you, Farron. I, I don't have it. I swear by Andraste's knickers. I sold it on the way here. Who did you sell it to? A dwarf near Redcliffe. Dwin, I think his name was. Wait, Dwin? I know him. He's the one who has the sword, I promise you. Said he was a collector. We'll see. Hello, how can I... <gasps> it's you, and it's been, well, Quite a while. Enough time to get to the circle and back, I hope. Oh, please tell me what they said. First Enchanter Irving accepted you for study. Ancestors, bless you. I can't believe it. There hasn't even been a Dwarven Observer in the circle since your Reldon in the 13th century. Uh, I, I, I need to pack. No, my parents would get suspicious. I need to go. Is there anything I should bring? Books? Tuition? Nothing. The mages need every ally they can get. Then I should go before my parents come looking for me. If you ever go to the circle again, maybe I'll see you there. Come on, who ate the cabbage? Why ask me? I guess you thought we could all share in the bounty. <sighs> oh, stand up to it, you giant ass. You birthed a cloud to be proud of. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've thought of a name. Phew, some fight. Reminds me why I left Orzammar in the first place. Thank you for helping with the battle. Hey, anything for Redcliffe, right? Whatever. First thing I'm gonna do is get some sleep. For about a week. Go celebrate or whatever it is you're gonna do. You won, right? You're a hero, or something. I'm looking for the Canari sword you bought. Now, why would you be interested in that? It's mine. <sighs> you know, Farron didn't mention the giant he took it from was alive. Name your price. Six sovereigns. Two sovereigns. Take it or leave it. Good enough. It's in my strongbox. Here's the key. Now, why don't you leave me alone? Strange. I had almost forgotten it. Completion. Are you sure you are a Grey Warden? I think you must be an Ashkari to find a single lost blade in a country at war. What will you do now? My sword is in my hand again. I should put it to use. And I could deliver a much more satisfying answer to the Arishok's question if the blight were ended. Don't you agree? So you're staying then? I am one of the Beresad. I have never abandoned the field with a battle unmet. I'm glad to have you, Sten. Yes, it isn't every Grey Warden who has her own Beresad. I will see you reach the Archdemon. Lead the way. Yes, it is good to have my sword at my side again. I call her Asala, the Soul. My soul. She is forged from rare blue steel and has served me faithfully for many years. Yes. You understand what it is like to have a weapon that is part of you. Few others do. Something on your mind? If you were raised in the Chantry, have you never... Never... never what? Had a good pair of shoes? You know what I mean. I'm not sure I do. Have I... Never seen a basilisk? Ate jellied ham? Have I never licked a lamppost in winter? Now you're making fun of me. Make fun of you, dear lady. Perish the thought. Well, tell me, 
Have you ever licked a lamppost in winter? <laughs> no, I've never licked a lamppost in winter. Good, I hear it's quite painful. I remember one of the younger initiates did it on a dare once, and there was pointing and laughing. Oh, the humanity. I myself have also never done it. That. Not that I haven't thought about it, of course, but, you know. You've never had the opportunity. Well, living in the Chantry is not exactly a life for rambunctious boys. They taught me to be a gentleman, especially in the presence of beautiful women such as yourself. That's not so bad, is it? You think I'm beautiful? I... did I say beautiful? Do you have any particular opinion on my saying that? I might like hearing it from you. Then I'll have to think of something more provocative next time, won't I? Until then, we should get underway, no? I have many tearful nights in my tent to contemplate, after all. So, life in the wilds must have been very lonely. At times, perhaps. A world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, it was to the trees. But you eventually left? Such simple pleasures will only enthrall for so long. I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. I can't imagine Flemeth was pleased. She was not. Flemeth was furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken. But you were just a child. And a foolish one. Flemeth was right to break me of my fascination. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Without those lessons, I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. Well, but you don't need to live that way any longer. Do I not? I am still an apostate mage, even if I have left the wilds. The Darkspawn are yet undefeated. No, there is much that remains. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely. But such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror, but such fantasies have no place amidst reality. It doesn't have better things to do. Are those crystals in your skin? I like to think of them as accessories. Huh. But what do they do? I suspect that it is an art that was practiced when golems were more, um, commonplace. My former master collected whatever lore he could find on the subject. He searched far and wide to collect what crystals he could and then added them. It is not an unpleasant sensation. So their decoration? As I understand it, the crystals allow me to alter the flow of magic around me. Wilhelm had hoped to turn me into a battery of mana, something he could tap at will. Did he succeed? Not really, although now that I think of it, these attempts may be what caused my disruption. Some of the crystals increase the presence of mana, some absorb or reflect spells. There are various kinds. All I can promise is that should it ever find one of these crystals, I can likely tell it the function and what it would do if added to me. I don't get to wear clothing and other adornments like the rest of you creatures after all. That answers its question, I assume? Unless it has more? No, no more questions. Better to save them for the next random stranger it decides to interrogate. You know, maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about this, but I have something to ask you. 
Chances are we'll be heading to Denerim soon. And when we're there, I wonder if we might be able to look someone up. You have a friend outside the Grey Wardens? I'm not talking about a friend, exactly. And no, it's not that sort of friend either. The thing is, I have a sister, a half-sister. I told you about my mother, right? She was a servant at Redcliffe Castle and she had a daughter. Only, I never knew about her. I don't think she knew about me either. They kept my birth a secret, after all. But, after I became a Grey Warden, I did some checking and... Well, I found out she's still alive. In Denerim. Have you contacted her? No. I thought about writing her, but I never did. And then we were called down to Ostagar, and I never got the chance. She's the only real family I have left. The only family not also mixed up in the whole royal thing. I've just been thinking that maybe it's time I went to see her. With the blight coming and everything, I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance to see her. Maybe I can help her. Warn her about the danger, I don't know. What are you expecting she'll do? I'm not sure. I don't know anything about her except her name and where she lives. Her name is Goldana. And I think she remarried, but still lives just outside the alienage. If we're in the area, then... Well, it's worth a look. Good to see you back. Need any more help? I've got complaints in the Nord Noble Tavern that some mercenaries have invaded. Nothing violent has happened. The cell swords are probably just disturbing the nobles' rarefied conversation. Just drum the louts out of there. The barkeep doesn't mind some blood, or sport as she called it. Captain said Denerim won't miss a few dead mercenaries. Do what you will, and good luck. You hear from Kailon? Those are the Crimson Ore louts right there. What are you looking at? We're the Crimson Ores. The Crimson Ores? You haven't heard of us. We're mercenaries from all over the world. We have won many battles, and tonight we drink before the next. And you drink here? The docks has much better bars. We happen to like the ale better here, the wine too. Less vomit on the floor. So long as we're paying, they're serving! <laughs> Wouldn't you prefer a bar with more women? Friendly ones? <laughs> you may have a point. Bar woman, you and your women are too old and shriveled. Too many damn clothes, right, boys? <laughs> Ors, we go to the docks. Let's find us some winches! Good job clearing those louts out. Huh. Edwina sends her thanks for getting rid of the Crimson Oars. Mind you, she's disappointed there was no fighting. Here's payment. You've helped out a great deal. That's my sister's house. I'm almost sure of it. This is, yes, this is the right address. She could be inside. Could we go and see? Yes, let's do that. Will she even know who I am? Does she even know I exist? My sister. That sounds very strange. Sister. Sister. Hmm. Oh, now I'm babbling. Maybe we should go. Let's go. Let, let's just go. Uh, hello? Hey, you have linens to wash? I charge three bits on a bundle. You won't find better. And don't trust what that Natalia woman tells you either. She's foreign and she'll rob you blind. I'm not here to have any wash done. <laughs> Uh, my name's Alistair. I'm... Well, this may sound sort of strange, but... Are you called Dana? If so, I suppose I'm your brother. My what? I am Goldana, yes. How do you know my name? What kind of tomfoolery are you folk up to? He's telling the truth. 
Listen to him. Look, our mother, she worked as a servant in Redcliffe Castle a long time ago before she died. D do you know about that? She... You! I knew it! They told me you was dead. They told me the babe was dead along with mother, but I knew they was lying. They told you I was dead? Who? Who told you that? Them's at the castle. I told them the babe was the king's and they said he was dead. Gave me a coin to shut my mouth and sent me on my way. I knew it. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. The babe didn't die. I'm him. I'm your brother. <laughs> For all the good it does me. You killed mother, you did. And I've had to scrape by all this time. That coin didn't last long and when I went back, they ran me off. Well, that's hardly Alistair's fault, is it? And who in the Maker's name are you? Some tart, following after his riches, I expect. Hey, don't speak to her that way. She's my friend and a Grey Warden, just like me. Oh, I see. A prince and a Grey Warden, too. Well, who am I to think poorly of someone so high and mighty compared to me? I don't know you, boy. Your royal father forced himself on my mother and took her away from me. And what do I got to show for it? Nothing. They tricked me good. I should have told everyone. I got five mouths to feed. And unless you can help with that, I got less than no use for you. I... I'm sorry, I... don't know what to say. Gordana, Alistair came here hoping to find his family. Well, he found it. And what good is that to me? None, that's what. Unless he can see to it that his family lives as it should. I suppose maybe I could give her some money from my nieces and nephews. Fifteen sovereigns, maybe? Would you let me give her that? Yes, go ahead if you like. Then here, Goldana, take this money. I know it's not much, but... You, a prince, marching in here with your fancy armor and such, and this is all you've got to offer? You must think I'm very stupid. No, wait, I, I don't think that at all. I, I want to help, if I can. You want to help? You go to whatever high and mighty folks you run with, and you tell them you've got nephews and nieces that aren't living as they've a right to. You do that! It looks like all she wants is your money. Yes, it really seems that way, doesn't it? I wasn't expecting my sister to be so... I'm starting to wonder why I came. I don't know why you came either, or what you expected to find. But it isn't here. Now get out of my house, the both of you. Let's leave. Now. I agree. Let's get out of here. Well, that was not what I expected, to put it lightly. I'm sorry I gave her any money at all. This is the family I've been wondering about all my life? That gold-digging Harridan? I can't believe it. I... I guess I was expecting her to accept me without question. Isn't that what family is supposed to do? I... I feel like a complete idiot. You don't need her. You have others who care for you. Such as? The only person who ever cared about me was Duncan. And he's gone. I care about you. I... Thank you. I'm glad you came with me. Let's just go. I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs>